Roseanne, welcome back. Thank you. Hi Justine, I'm so excited. This looks great and interesting. I'm sure it does. There are a lot of items here that many people don't usually include in their diets. And I really want to emphasize the benefit of how to include legumes as part of our healthy diet because they are incredibly beneficial. So perhaps we should start with you giving me an indication of what you know about legumes. Perhaps if you include them yourself in your diet at the moment and then I can give you some suggestions. So what I know about legumes is that it causes gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit concerning. So if you've got any uh, trade secrets on that, I'd appreciate it. And, and I think of legumes as beans. You know, I, I don't know what that is. So what is that? Okay, so I'm gonna take you through all of it. And the point that you made about causing gas is very valid. And this is a concern that many people have. They worry that when they include legumes, that it causes gas and bloating and distension and they therefore stay away from them. The truth is that legumes are included as part of a healthy diet and in particular the Mediterranean lifestyle that we've discussed. The reason being is that they are very high in fiber, which is where the gas comes from, as well as in proteins and carbohydrates as well. So just to give you more of an introduction and then I'll address your concerns. In general, legumes are high in protein and carbohydrate and they can be included for vegetarians and for vegans as well in order to replace proteins that they lack from eating animal products. However, being a vegetarian or vegan is not the only place for legumes and many people including them in a normal diet is inc incredibly important. I in particular try to include legumes once a day, either at lunch or at dinner time, or even at snack time, which I'm going to tell you about, in order to be able to get the benefit of these legumes. So, why do they call gas? Why do they cause gas? Is because they have got on their, in, within their properties, a product called, it's a big word, galacto-oligosaccharides. Okay, that okay. sounds like and, S to me. And, and, and GOS. <laughs> and when we eat products like this, particularly when we're not drinking enough water to go with it, then we can get a lot of bloating and distension in the body. The trick to cooking legumes and including them in a way that prevents as much gas being formed is really in the soaking process and how we prepare them. So for example, I'll take an example here. These are chickpeas. Um, I have already soaked them. So the natural way that they look is a lot smaller and rounder and harder. What I've done with these is that I've soaked them for about 12 to 24 hours. You can choose the length of time that you want to soak them for. I prefer to soak them for longer in water. So you need a lot more water than the actual chickpea to start. And my trick is to add bicarbonate of soda into the water. And this helps to draw out a lot of those products that then cause gas and bloating and oh, distension. That's an amazing trick. Chickpeas are wonderful to add into salads. They're amazing to add into stews and curries. In fact, uh, there's a specific Moroccan dish. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a, a Moroccan soup where you've got couscous as the basis of the grain and then almost like a soup that is made with chickpeas and vegetables that you eat together. And when that happens, uh, you combine the legume and the grain and this becomes a complete protein for a vegetarian or a vegan. So it's wonderful for them to include. The delicious snack which I know you've tried previously in my videos, which I then took these chickpeas and roasted in the oven to create this delicious snack. You can taste another one if you'd like. Uh, I'd love to in okay. a minute. So, I, I just, I'm sorry mm. to interrupt. These are already after they've been soaked. Correct, okay. correct. So I've soaked, I've taken these chickpeas here, which were dried. I soaked them for 24 hours in water with a bicarbonate of soda. I then placed them on a baking tray together with a little bit of canola oil, about a teaspoon of canola oil. You can use the cold pressed virgin olive oil as well. And then I added some paprika, 
a little bit of salt and you can choose really any spices that you want and I roasted these in the oven until they were crunchy. Some ovens take a little bit longer, some less and these are a wonderful snack to have and include instead of nuts and they give you the good fiber component that legumes have together with the proteins and the, and the carbohydrates. So that's one idea. You asked about these legumes here which are actually soya beans. Ah. Okay, so soya is another topic of hot debate, particularly because of the phytoestrogen component of them. And in truth, most of our legumes have got phytoestrogens in them and have got phytosterols in them as well. And the benefit of them is that they do not actually act as an estrogen in the body. It's not the same as having a synthetic estrogen that you are taking in. It actually helps and assists in a much better way for our bodies to be able to include natural soya products instead of maybe some of the processed ones. So I don't have to worry about soya? So the, uh, the processed soya I wouldn't include too much of, okay. but beans like soya beans and edamame beans are very wonderful and healthy. And in fact, they're not only part of the Mediterranean diet, they are also part of many of the Eastern diets as well as the DASH diet, which is to lower blood pressure. Oh. What I love doing with soya beans is I create a salad with that. I, I boil those up. I don't necessarily even soak those. Boil them up and I add that with tuna and a little bit of low fat feta cheese and some salad and it makes a very delicious and wholesome meal. These are beans that I generally include into stews and curries. And again here, you can soak them to start off with, but because of the cooking process that they're going through in order to cook together with a meat or a chicken dish or even a fish dish, you don't necessarily have to soak them for as long, perhaps about an hour in the fridge before cooking them. And that adds a wonderful component of fiber and helps to lower blood sugar when included in dishes as well. So what these legumes also do is that for diabetics, they are very beneficial. Again, portion size is important. If you eat too much of any of these, it will push blood sugar level up. It will cause a lot of fiber to come into the body and can cause that bloating and distension that so many people complain about. However, if you eat them as one serving size a day, between half and a cup of any of these or a mixture of these, they really help to increase your wellness they also have many antioxidants as well, which means that they work to um, reduce inflammation in the body. So they're very beneficial from an inflammation point of view as well. So just to go back, you mentioned a half a cup or a cup uh, of any of these or, or a mixture of these per day. Do you mean raw? Before? No, so this I mean cooked, mm. absolutely, okay. because this raw, would have been half the size. So the minute that we're cooking it up, it expands it and extends okay. it. Okay. These are black lentils. You can get all different colors and, and types of lentils, depending on what you want to use it for. These lentils I love making together with red quinoa, and that again forms a complete protein. This, for example, with tofu and some vegetables like mushrooms and spinach with a little bit of tahina makes the most delicious meal, which is full of fiber and bursting with nutrients. And then finally, these are your wonderful white cannellini beans, which are very frequently used in soups like minestrone soup. So if you're going to have like that typical Mediterranean soup, these kind of beans will be found in there. And I love taking these and hiding them in soups for my kids and for my family because if they see it like this, they're not going to eat it. Mm -hmm. So once I've cooked a vegetable soup, I cook this with it and then I blend it together and it forms a really rich and thick soup with all the nutrients, all the fiber of the beans. They don't even know they're eating it. Wow, that's clever. Thanks for that. My <laughs> pleasure. So the other few points that I just want to, to highlight for you is that by including legumes in your diet, you are also allowing at each meal time to be able to have more satiety. What satiety means is that a sense of fullness. 
So when you have a balance of all the, the, the food groups together, as we discussed before, so you've got your grains and you've got your, if you include your legumes at the meal as well, it makes you just feel that much more satisfied by a meal. And what the legumes do is help to stabilize blood sugar level. So for diabetics, that's one of the reasons that they are so beneficial. They also help to lower your LDL cholesterol in your body, which is the cholesterol that causes the most disease with heart disease. Uh, the most damage with heart disease. So these are really, if you can introduce all different kinds of legumes in various ways into your diet, you will be covering a spectrum of, of all of the properties and allow for better health, both from an anti-inflammatory point of view, a fiber point of view, and uh, that sense of fullness that you get from eating a meal. So the legumes seem like one of the healthiest things that I should be adding into absolutely, my diet. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. If you can include it once a day, you'll be doing really well. The thing is, because again, to address your gas issue, when you're introducing them for the first time, start with a smaller amount. I wouldn't go and eat a cup a day of something new that you've never tried before. Maybe add a, a tablespoon or two to a meal, see how your body reacts, make sure that you drink enough water with it as well. Because of that extra fiber, you want to ensure that you're not getting that extra gas and bloating. Well, thank you. Thanks for the tip as well. And um, okay, they're going to be added. Give them a try. I will do. Thanks for coming. <laughs> and thanks, Justine. Pleasure.